All right, boys, bros, very few women that subscribe to the channel, and I know that, statistically speaking, because of my analytics, like 1% women. Anyway, here we are. You guys ask, you know, what is there to do? Well, man, there ain't much to do. Matt, how do you like these quick jacks? Man, I love them. I gotta say, I really like them because I can swap them between the bays if I needed to. I can load them, stack them up against the wall if I need to put them away. And it only, it takes less than 30 seconds to go from floor to, there's the locks, both locks. There's down on the keys. And then if you might not have noticed, I don't know if I mentioned it, when I pulled the engine, once you take the pressure off, you can disconnect. Those are dry disconnects. You can cap it and you just cap it to make sure the, the hydraulic connection doesn't get all shitty and leak. And then I just wheeled my stuff in here and whatever, but lately I've been picking it up and down. Again, I talk about, you know, in 30 minutes to an hour a day will really get you really far. I just had to do little stuff like I had some spark plugs laying around, brand new ones, but I only had like six of them. So then I bought the rest and extras, so I put the rest of the plugs in. Let's fire up that Milwaukee underhood automotive light. For right now, I have a one bar map sensor hooked into a vacuum line just to start it till I figure out what I want to do. The only thing missing is my fuel line stuff and I have an ethanol content sensor. Here I'm gonna add in also. Literally all I have to do to fire this is hook up the fuel line. So hopefully I get everything tomorrow and I can start it. Uh, the, my coil packs are still filthy. I like to mention that. Everyone say it's not sloppy enough. That's for you guys. I'm keeping those filthy for you for now. The other neat thing is Steven said, as he mainly deals in like L99, 6.2, the uh, aluminum LS3 and stuff like that, he says that those have a lower coil pack mounting point than the truck. And this touches slightly, but he said on the LS3 style coil, it's so low, it rubs the body and you actually have to ding the body slightly or move the coil pack bolt because there's interference and you can't get the rubber boot on. So I didn't have to do that, so I just, for fun, I was like, hey, if you got truck coils, you don't have to do that. And he's like, oh, well, you know, well noted. So tomorrow, hopefully we're firing this guy up. I got everything connected underneath. Also, and let me tell you what, uh, I just got a wire there. Ha! Huh? And these are for the fans. Those are my two connectors for the fans. So there is literally barely any wiring left. And I smell like, this is like a rotting fuel smell. It's disgusting. Whatever is in this tank is, is awful. It's like 73 octane. So I want to get some fresh gas for it and hook up the fuel line and the ethanol content sensor. And I flashed a base tune in that hopefully fires it. It is open header right now. This is a two and a half inch cat back that came with the car. I can't see a name brand on it anywhere. I don't know what it is. It's what I'm going to use for now. So I'm gonna reduce the three inch to the two and a half. That two, dual two and a half will be plenty for as much power as I wanna make. It definitely does not need dual three inch. So we'll go with that for now. We'll get it running. We'll get the exhaust connected to that. We'll see how loud it is. If it's too loud, I'll add mufflers to it somehow. I don't want it to be insanely loud. It's only gonna make like 300 horsepower. So I don't care if it's, if it's super loud, it's gonna be more annoying to me than anything. Anyway, I digress. This is where we are at. I need to fire it. Once it's running, I wanna make sure before I do too much else, I wanna make sure that the clutch engages and disengages. So I'll drop it down make sure I can move back and forth. I'll warm it up a little bit and then I'll be doing a happy dance because I did, you know, 90 some percent of it right. And at that point, I wanna wire the fan relay outputs into the fan plugs that are underneath. And once the fans come on, I'll warm it up. I'll make sure it comes with the temperature. I'll top off all the fluids. I'll check the fluids 16 times. Turn the steering lock to lock, fill the fluids again, check the fluids again. Because, you know, an easy way to screw yourself is to run out of fluid on something fresh and new. So, once all that's done and the fluids are checked for the 55th time, 
and the bolts are put in the front end. Let's make a note of that. And the exhaust is connected. I want to take it to my buddy's shop, Mitch, and he's going to charge my air conditioning, which I, that's going to be like the, guys, that's going to be the moment because it's hot out right now. And once he pressurizes that AC system and I feel that the glorious ice cubes blowing out of my vents, I'm going to be very pleased. I don't know how I will be able to convey that. Hopefully you will see the, you'll see the luxurious, my hair flapping in the AC breeze. There isn't much of it, but hopefully you see it. Yeah, I'll be sure to talk about it every time I do anything. Talk about how incredible my air conditioning is. And then we're going to go right to how much power does it make? We're going to lean on it on the dyno on straight pump gas. See what it does. Well, straight pump gas anymore is roughly 10% ethanol anyway. Between 8 and 10% is what I see. Then we're going to put E85 in it. We're going to see how much I gain. And then, you know, it's all going to snowball from there. And we're going to do viewer's choice style stuff and run the gambit. So that's where we're at. Hopefully tomorrow we make some smoke. We button up the rest of the tiny little stuff that I didn't get done the first round. But all in all, super excited for that. You guys will be there.